The question is posed by Fatima Patel, a university student from Birmingham, UK. Why is Allah allowing the unjust Israeli forces to kill thousands of innocent Palestinians for the last seven weeks? Why does Allah not give victory to the Palestinians? What should the Muslims do? This question calls for a very long answer. The question posed was that why is Allah allowing the unjust Israeli forces to kill thousands of Palestinians for the last seven weeks? And why does Allah not give the Palestinians victory? And what should the Muslims do? And we know that since the 7th of October 2023, this war has started between the Palestinians and Israel. And in the last seven weeks, from 7th of October till today, more than 15,000 Palestinians have been killed. And this started after my sessions were discontinued while I was on a tour to Qatar and to Nigeria. And I've given talks on this issue in several places, including in my online talks in different parts in UK, etc. Also, the last Juma Qutbah I gave in Nigeria, in the National Mosque in Abuja, was about three weeks ago. And the topic was genocide in Palestine. That was the 40 minutes Qutbah talk I gave before the Juma Salah. But since this is the first time I'll be speaking on this issue, so inshallah I will try to give the answer. The question posed was that why is Allah allowing the unjust Israeli forces to kill thousands of Palestinians. And we know that the Palestinians, they are protecting the third holiest site of Islam, that is Masjid Aqsa. They are doing Farid Kafaya on behalf of the Muslim Ummah. And they are protecting the third holiest site, that is Masjid Aqsa. And they are doing Farid Kafaya. If not, we Muslim would have to go and protect the third holy site of Islam. And why is Allah allowing? There are various reasons. I'll just mention the important reasons. Number one, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, 206, verse number 216, that you may hate a thing which may be good for you. And you may love a thing which is bad for you. Allah knows and you know not. So many a times a thing which you may feel is not good, which you may hate, is actually, it may be good for you. And a thing which you may love may not be good for you. Allah knows and you don't know. I'd like to give an incidence to explain this verse of the Quran. Once there was a man who was catching a flight from Doha to USA and he wanted to reach USA the next day. It was a very important business deal in which he would get a minimum profit of a million dollars. While going towards the airport, there was a traffic jam. And due to the traffic jam, he is unable to reach to the airport in time to catch his flight and he misses the flight. And he says, this is the worst thing that happened in my life. I missed the flight and now I missed the meeting and I will lose a profit of more than a million dollars that I was going to make. On his way back, when he's returning back home, he hears, he hears on the radio that the flight that he was about to catch from Doha to New York, the flight while taking off, it crashes. And all the passengers in that flight, they die. So the person says, ah, this is the best thing that happened to me, that I missed the flight. Imagine, just an hour before, he was seeing that he missed the flight and that was the worst thing that happened to him in his life. And he was cursing. One hour later when he realizes the flight he was about to catch, which he was about to board, it crashes and all the passengers die. He says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is the best thing that happened to him in his life. So that's what Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse number 216. That you may hate a thing which may be good for you. And you may love a thing which may be bad for you. You do not know, Allah knows. So in this situation we know 
that on the face of it, more than 15,000 innocent Palestinians have been killed. And there was a ceasefire for a, approximately a week. And again, the bombarding has started since yesterday. And yesterday alone, more than 100 innocent Palestinians were killed. And out of those killed, more than 15,000, two-thirds of them are women and children. More than 40% are children and more than 27% are women. On the face of it, of course, we feel what's happening is wrong and it's totally wrong. But when we look at the brighter side or the other side of it, we realize that this war between the Palestinians and the Israeli forces is continuing since decades, since more than 75 years this war is taking place. And we know that the Israelis have occupied the land of the Muslims, of the Palestinians, the Arabs. And we know that the Muslims in more than 75, 80 years back, they welcomed them. Hitler incinerated 6 million Jews. Many of the Jews came to Palestine and the Muslims welcomed them. But later on, the same Israelis, the Jews, who were given shelter by the Muslims, by the Palestinian Arabs, they kick them out of the house and when they want the land back, they are saying that they're terrorists. We know this is going on since many years. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the world, many countries in the world, they're supporting this unjust act of the Israelis, that they are settlers, they have sorry, they are occupiers, they have occupied the land, and now they are calling the people to whom the land belongs as terrorists. If we look at the brighter side of this issue, when this war started on 7th of October, one week later, when there was a poll done, 65% of the people around the world, they supported Palestine. They were in the favor of Palestine. And 35%, they supported Israel. But one month after the war, when we realized that the footage of the social media, which went viral and showed the injustice done by the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, that they killed innocent people, they targeted, they broke most of the international laws of war. They selectively targeted civilians. They selectively targeted innocent children, or women. They targeted hospitals, they targeted schools, they targeted mosques, and they broke almost all international laws of war. And this was known to the world because today the world is a global village. On the social media, on the Facebook, on, on, the, on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, we have live images. Never before has it happened. Before when the wars took place in 1948, in 1973, and all these wars, we used to get some videos or some audios, maybe a few days later, a few weeks later, a few months later, not knowing whether it's true or not. Now, we can have a live telecast because of the social media, because of the international satellite channel. So when the poll was taken a month after this war started, Alhamdulillah, 95% of the world was in favor of Palestine and only 5% in favor of Israel. And now, nearly seven weeks after this, surely the percentage in favor of Israel may have risen. Maybe it's 97 or 98% and hardly 2 or 3% are yet supporting Israel. What we find in the social media, though the heads of these Western countries whether it be USA, whether it be UK, whether it be European countries, they are yet supporting Israel. It is an unjust act. You can see the double standards that USA had as compared to Ukraine. When Russia attacked Ukraine, it gave all its support to Ukraine to defend against Israel. And here, they are doing exactly the opposite. And if you compare between Russia and Ukraine and Israel and Palestine, there's a difference of chalk and cheese. The Israelis are much more wrong as compared to what happened between Russia and Ukraine. Because this land belonged to the Palestinians. And 
they were occupiers. Yet today America supports Israel and this year alone they have funded 3.8 billion dollars only in military equipment to Israel to attack innocent, innocent Palestinians and kill 15,000 Palestinians. You see the, dub the double standards and the world has come to know about this. And now we feel that though the heads of states, the heads of countries, of these Western countries are yet supporting Israel, but the masses, leave aside the Muslims, even the non-Muslim masses in America, in UK, they, there are strong protests in thousands, in tens of thousands, in hundreds of thousands supporting Palestine, supporting the Palestinian cause. And we can see this. So if you see the brighter side, we know, we, we really pray for the Palestinians. You know, may Allah give them istikama, may Allah give them steadfastness, may Allah give them sabr, may Allah grant Jannah for those to the martyrs. But if you look at the brighter side, that 15,000 have been killed, yes, it is depressing. It is worth condemning. But we realize that what the world did not know for the last more than 75 years, in this last two months, in last seven weeks, the world has come to know what Israelis are. And they have come to know the truth. That is the reason you have in the parliament of various Western countries, the masses, the common man in the Western countries, it's supporting Palestine. So this, if you see with a with that 15,000 people have died, yes, it's a point to be condemned, it's, it's, we, we feel hurt about it. But you see the brighter side of the coin that now the world has come to know about it. So that's the reason when certain Islamic scholars have discussed and they realize that what has happened is better in the long run. That now at least the world has come to know. So that's why Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah chapter 2, verse number 216, you may hate a thing which may be good for you. And you may love a thing which is not good for you. Allah knows and you do not know. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 155 and 156, Allah says that surely we will test you with something of fear and hunger, with loss of lives and fruits of your, fruits of your toil. Give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere, those who are sour. And verse number 156 says, and those people who when they inflicted with calamity, they say, inna lillahi wa inna ilahi wa rajiun. That surely from him we come and surely to him will we return. From Allah we come and to Allah will we return. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that surely we will test every human being with something of fear and hunger with loss of life and your goods and the fruits which you have gained. And blessed are those people who do sabr, who patiently persevere. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that surely you are going to test every human being. Do you think you will enter heaven without being tested? And we know that more difficult the test is, more higher is the reward. And we know that amongst all the human beings that have come from Adam and Salam till today. The Ambiyas, the messengers, the prophets of God have been tested the most severely. That is the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given them a higher status. The test that the Ambiyas, the messengers, the prophets of Almighty God have undergone is more difficult than the non-prophets. And then we know that the test, the Sahabas, at the time of the Prophet, 1400 years ago, the Khul Farashin and the Sabah, they underwent that is the second most difficult test. So surely, you should know that the test undergone by the Ambiya is much more difficult. And higher the test, if you pass the test, higher is the reward. So one thing you have to realize that if there is a calamity, the calamity can be two. It can be for two reasons. One, it can be as a punishment for the evil you have done or second, it can be a test for you. 
So if the person is on the straight path, following Allah and His Rasul, following the Quran and say Hadith, and if a calamity comes, it is surely a test for him. Allah wants to test him on a higher level and more difficult the calamity. And if the believer passes it, the higher reward he'll get, inshallah. If the person is not on the straight path and if a calamity comes, then surely that calamity is a punishment for him. So, this test that the Palestinians are enduring is really a very difficult test. And Allah is testing them. Surely he'll test everyone with something of fear, of hunger, with loss of life, with loss of fruits that you have gained, with the toiling that you have done. And give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 26, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not lay a burden more than what a person can bear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a promise in the Quran that on no human being does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lay a burden more than he can bear. And as you go ahead in the verse, that's the last verse of Surah Baqarah, it says that we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lay not on us a burden greater than we can bear. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, when Allah has given a promise that he will not lay a burden greater than any hum on any human being more than what he can bear, then why are we praying to Allah that lay not on us a burden greater than we can bear? Many a times the human being themselves put themselves in a position where they let the burden come on them. So they are to blame, they dig their own grave. So yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that he will not put on anyone a burden greater than he can bear. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allah khalaqal mawta wal hayata. It's Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. So this life is a test for the hereafter. We are living this life as a test for the hereafter. And Allah is testing that which of us is good in deeds. So whatever that happens in this world, it's a test for the hereafter. Regarding coming to your question, your main question, that why does Allah allow the unjust Israeli forces to kill thousands of Palestinians? This life is a test. Allah is testing. Allah wants to test different human beings of different parts of the world. And when Allah is testing, Allah can easily stop this massacre. For Allah to stop the genocide is very easy. Allah just has to say, kun fayakun, be and it is. But then how will he understand? He'll understand, but how will we understand that have we passed the test or not? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in my game. Allah is testing us. And Allah is letting us know how we will fare the test. So on the day of judgment, no human being can object to the justice of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows which human being will pass or not. But we don't know. So this, all these incidences are tests. And when Allah is testing, first we know that the atrocities that has been inflicted on the Palestinians According to me, almost all, a majority, more than 95% will surely pass this test with flying colors. The Palestinians, there may be few, a very small minority, a very small percentage who may be hand in dub with the Israeli or may be breaking the law of the Quran Sunnah, but majority, almost all, surely more than 95% of the Palestinians, they are going to pass this test with flying colors. And we can see that we have got evidence that mothers whose children have been martyred. They say that if Allah gives us more ten children, we would love them to be martyred in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have children giving testimony. We have women giving testimony. The mothers, the fathers. And we can see the way they are reacting. And because of this, the non-Muslims, when they are seeing that what is making these Palestinians, even after they are being 
tortured, after they've been massacred, after their family members have been killed, yet they are saying Alhamdulillah, yet they are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is making thousands of, tens of thousands of Muslims to read the Quran, that how come these Palestinians, even after this genocide, they are thanking the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because tens of thousands of non-Muslims read the Quran, and when they read the Quran, their hearts are opened up. Their mind is opened up. And they said, what is this book? And Alhamdulillah, in the span of last seven weeks, there are thousands or tens of thousands of non-Muslims who have accepted Islam. Allah Akbar. So you can know that this, what has happened in the last seven weeks, because of the atrocities, because of the genocide done by the Israeli forces on the Palestinians, and we can see the double standards of the media. The media is defending the mainstream media, whether it be CNN, whether it be BBC. They have been giving false narratives that the Palestinian forces, they are killing innocent babies, they are torturing innocent civilians, all these are fabricated news. And once when they exposed, many people are losing faith in the mainstream media, whether it be BBC, whether it be CNN, and they are going to alternative, better, truthful media like Al Jazeera, like Al Arabiya, and you can see the difference. So all this is a plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's letting the world know, and we can see thousands of people embracing Islam, and you can see the testimony that they are Christians, they are Jews. Many Jews are coming out in open and saying that we condemn the Israelis, they are Zionists, they are not Jews, they are not following the book of, Al of Almighty God, they are against the teachings of Judaism. There are demonstrations of thousands of Jews in America, in UK and all over the world, they are condemning Israel and the testimonies are filled in the social media. Many of the social media accounts are being blocked, they are being tampered with, they are being silenced. But they can silence a few hundred, a few thousand, but not millions. So here you can find that because of this war, the unjust war, the atrocities done by Israelis and Palestinians for the last seven weeks, because of that the world has come to know. So it was surely a very good bargain that yes, 15,000 people have been killed. But all these 15,000 people, more than 15,000 who have been killed, or maybe many more which are unidentified, maybe in rubbles. All of them, inshallah, will go to Janet Firdos. All of these innocent people will go to Janet Firdos. So, they have passed this test. What we have to see, see to it, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing the human being. He is not only testing the Palestinians, at the same time, he is giving rope for the people are doing atrocities to continue. He is letting, as the Quran says, he is letting the unbelievers go astray, giving them rope to hang themselves. Allah can solve this problem very easily, but he is letting them do the injustice so that he can hold them accountable, so that he can give them hell in the hereafter. Allah is checking the other non-Muslims, what are they doing? Are they agreeing with this atrocity? Are they supporting this genocide? What's happening in UA? What's happening in UN? So here we come to know that Allah is testing everyone, not only the Palestinians and the, and the Israelis, but even the Muslims and non-Muslims all over the world. And we know that the Palestinians and inshallah are going to pass with flying colors. And the Israeli, if not all, almost all, who are doing injustice, especially the Zionist, the Zionist who are planning all this, they will surely be entered in the hellfire in the hereafter. Now, Allah is opening eyes of the non-Muslims. What are they doing? Are they supporting this unjust regime? At the same time, Allah is even testing the Muslims. What are we Muslims doing? What are we doing? Are we just sitting and doing nothing? Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that if any one of the Muslim, the whole Muslim Ummah is like one body. And if one part of the body is in pain, the whole body is in pain. So if one part of the body suffers, anyone in the Muslim Ummah suffers, the whole Ummah should stand for it. So what are we doing? 
the Palestinians, inshallah, almost all, majority of them, will pass this flying colors. What are we Muslims doing? Is this not a test for us also? And I've given a talk before on the 13-point action plan by the Muslim Ummah for the Palestinian cause. And the last talk I gave before the Juma, before the Juma Salah in Nigeria, in Abuja, in the National Mosque, it was 15-point action plan for the Muslim Ummah as far as the Palestinian issue is concerned. Time will not permit me to speak in detail. I'll just briefly mention about this because the questioner, the first part of the question was why does not why does Allah allow the Israeli forces, the unjust Israeli forces, to kill thousands of Palestinians because Allah is testing them? Why doesn't Allah give victory to the Palestinians? And Allah can give them very easily, I said. And we know in history that in the Battle of Badr, where the Muslims were hardly 313 and the enemies were more than a thousand, three times more, yet they were victorious. The enemies were more powerful. <coughs> they were more well equipped. They had better horses. They had better arms. They had better equipment for fighting. Yet, because of support of Allah, in the Battle of Badr, the Muslims, they defeated the non-Muslims, even though they were three times the number. We know, it's mentioned in the Quran and from history, in David and, between David and Goliath, Prophet David, peace be upon him, very weak, very small in terms of numbers, but when he fought with Goliath, who was more powerful, more stronger, much bigger, more in number, yet the victory was with those who were in the truth. So, Allah is testing, Allah is waiting and seeing what are the other non-Muslims doing, what are the Muslims doing and coming to the question that what should the Muslims do? I'll just say in brief, the 15-point action plan for the Muslim Ummah as far as the Palestinian cause is concerned. Number one, you have to realize that the Palestinians, they are protecting the third holiest site of Islam, Masjid Aqsa. They are doing for the kafaya. If they would not have protected, have sacrificed their life, sacrificed the wealth that they have in protecting the third holiest site, it would have been duty of every Muslim all over the world to go and physically protect that site. So they are doing for the kafaya. So we owe it to them. And in the 15-point action plan, the first seven can be done by any Muslim. Whether he's rich or poor, whether black or white, whether Arab or non-Arab, whether living close to Palestine or far away from Palestine, irrespective. Every Muslim can do the seven points, the first seven points. The balance eight points from the 15-point action plan can be done by those people who Allah has given niyama or have blessed with certain facility. But the first seven, every individual Muslim can do. Whether rich or poor, whether black or white, whether Arab or non-Arab, whichever part of the world is living in. Number one, the least a Muslim can do is do dua for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. The least we can do is do dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he give steadfastness to the Palestinians. May he give them suffer. Uh, may, may he give them sabr, may he ele elevate their suffering, may he ease things for them, may he grant Janata Firdos to the people who have been martyred, may, may, may he make it easy for the family members of those who have been martyred. The least we can do is do dua. And we find that, mashallah, the Muslim Ummah in many parts of the world, they are following the Sunnah of the Prophet, that in times of calamity, we have to read Dua Qunud or Nazila. And we can do that in all five salah. In the last raka, in the last raka after ruku when we get up, the Prophet, the Sunnah, that in times of calamity, he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After getting up from ruku, in the last raka of all the five for the salah, we do dua. Dua I kunud, dua I nazila, and alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. We find that different parts of the world people are praying, especially in Malaysia. Mashallah, in most of the mosques, five times a day, we find that people are doing dua and they are praying for the Palestinian brothers and sisters 
and we are praying in Jama that may Allah give them sabr, may Allah elevate them and may he take away the suffering. May he grant them the firdos to the people who have been martyred and may he give them victory. And individually, we should do as much as was possible, especially in the last one third of the night. And the Prophet said, in the last one third of the night, there is one hour where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lower heaven and asks, is there any of my servants who want something and I will answer his prayer. So the best time in the full day to dua is the last one third of the night, especially in tahajjud, in the night prayer, in the sujood, when we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's the best. And those who pray tahajjud, this is the best time in the last one third of night, especially in the sujood, pray for the Palestinian brothers and sisters. And those who don't pray tahajjud regularly, are not used to praying tahajjud, this may be an excuse for you that at least get up in the last one third of night, maybe one hour before the fajr or half an hour before the fajr adhan and pray tahajjud. You may never know, by this it may become a part of a lifestyle, which is one of the most important sunnah after the faraid. Number two, it is the duty of every Muslim that he should make the people aware, the people around him, whether they be Muslims, whether they be non-Muslims, the atrocity that the, the Zionist, the Israeli Jews are doing on the Arab Muslim Palestinian brothers and sisters. You can, you can inform one to one to your friends maybe to a gathering, maybe on the social media, whether you have a Facebook account, whether on the WhatsApp, whether on the YouTube, whether on the Instagram, whether on TikTok, whether on X. See to it that you make the people aware of the atrocities the Israelis are doing, the Zionists are doing on the Palestinian brothers and sisters, on the innocent children, on the innocent uh, human being, on the innocent woman. And we can find that in the last one week, when there was a truce for approximately seven days, it was four days, extended to five days, then six days, then seven days. And we find when the hostages were being re released, you can see the difference when the Palestinian resistant forces, when they were releasing the hostages, you can find that the hostage is really respected those hostages who were with the Palestinians for about four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks, you could find that how close they were to them, you know, and they were smiling and they were happy. And you can see the stories that how when they were released, they praised the people who kept them captive. And you can hear the stories, what they said, that these people, they protected us. And imagine, imagine if you were one of them, if you were one of the captives, one of the hostages. And imagine when you have been taken away by the Palestinians and you realize that your own country, Israel, they are dropping bombs, they are doing carpet bombing. They have nearly destroyed more than half of Gaza. They have displaced hundreds of thousands of human beings of the Palestinians in Gaza. They have killed more than 15,000 Palestinians and thousands more. They, have, they may be under, uh, under the uh, rubbles of the buildings, of they, may, uh, they may not be yet traced. And when you find that your own country is bombing and your captives are taking you under the tunnel and keeping you safe, what will be the plight. Imagine they are dropping bombs. Your own country is dropping bombs on you and the people who have captured you, they are protecting you from your own country. What a sight. Allah Akbar. And they thought to it that they gave them food. And they gave them food better than what they ate. And they knew that though there were thousands of Palestinians who were dying, there were tens of thousands who were hungry, yet they thought to it that the few hundred hostages that they had, they saw to it that they gave them good food, proper food. They took care of them. They had medical doctors attending to them 24 by 7. 
they saw to it that took, they, they took care of the needs of the women and they saw to it that they felt safe. The treatment that they got for the last few weeks, five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks, was phenomenal. It changed their life. Contrast with the with when the Israeli forces, when they are releasing the hostages which they kept for five years, ten years, fifteen years, without any charges, when they were released, they were talking about the atrocities that the Israelis did on them. The condition of the prisons were atrocious. They were not given food to eat. They were not even given one proper meal a day. They could not see the outside world. And they were not allowed to read books, not allowed to hear the news. You could see the contrast between the two hostages or the two, two types of prisoners. And when the resistant force of Palestine, when they were releasing the hostages, you could see the smile on the face of the hostages. They were shaking hands. They were saying goodbye. They were uh, meeting each other as though they were going to miss them. As though they are saying that thank you for taking care of us. On the other side here, the atrocities they did, the injustice they did, and the, and the news that the Palestinians who were captured by the Israeli forces and were kept without any reason for years together, they were threatened that we will rape you. The women were threatened that they'll be raped. They were threatened that the children will be killed, that they'll be burned alive. They were threatened that their parents will be killed. They were tortured. See the contrast. This gives an example of a true Muslim that even though when they kept hostages, they sought out that they protected them. They protected them more than their own family members. They protected them more than what they did to their own citizens. So this is a sample of Islam. And surely the world has seen this because of which thousands of non-Muslims accepted Islam. So much so that the Israeli have put a band on the hostages that were released by the Palestinian resistance forces, they told that the released hostages should not give any interview to any of the news channels. They were afraid. So you, you can see that this is Allah's plan. Why, if Allah wants, Allah can stop it. But Allah is exposing the double standards of the Western world, exposing the atrocities done. Imagine if Allah wanted on day one, Allah could have easily seen to it that the Palestinians win the war, but the world wouldn't have known. Yet the world would have had a soft corner for the Jews, for the Zionists, for Israel. Now it is confirmed that more than 95% of the world, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, they know the atrocities done by the Israelis, by the Zionists. So this is Allah's plan. So we, number two, should make it known to the best of, of ability, every Muslim, to make it common. They find it, they should spread it. Check up that the news is correct and spread it on their social media account, on their Facebook, on the WhatsApp, on the YouTube, on the Instagram, on the TikTok, on the Twitter, on the X, as far as possible. Number three, I request every Muslim the 10 most important people that he has on his list. He should see to it that he personally messages them or calls them or speaks to them and talks about this issue and how we should support the Palestinians and stop the genocide atrocities done by the Israelis on the Palestinians. The 10 best people, some people may know heads of states, some people may be aware of the prime ministers of the of the presidents, of the ministers, or you may be a common man, your top may be a secretary general of your building committee, he may be maybe a principal of a school, whichever 10 most important people that you feel you know, see to it that you personally one to one convey this message and talk about the atrocities done by the Israelis on the Palestinians. Point number four, see to it that you discuss this in gatherings whether you go to school, see to put on the school notice board, on the colleges, on the universities, see to it that you street place, that you make it more common. As much as awareness as possible to expose the double standard of the Western world, to expose that the double standards of USA, what they are doing in 
the war between Russia and Ukraine and what they are doing between the war with Israel and Palestinian. The double standard should be exposed. Point number five, see to it that you take part in a protest against the atrocities done by the Zionist, the Israeli forces against the Palestinians. See to it that you gather in large numbers in your area, in your city, in your country and the protest should be peaceful. It should not be violent, you should not destroy properties, should not torture vehicles. It should be a peaceful protest so that the larger the numbers are, the more aware will the people know and Alhamdulillah, Summa Alhamdulillah. Never in the history of the world ever has there been such large support for the Palestinians in the last hundred years. Never ever has there been so much support by the non-Muslims for the Palestinian cause. And you can find non-Muslims waving flags and they are supporting, saying that Palestine should be freed and stop the atrocity, stop the genocide. You should take part in protest. Point number six, that we should ban the products of Israel and ban the products of those countries that are supporting Israel so that we put an economic pressure on them. And we find this is happening in many of the Muslim countries, including Malaysia, that they are banning the products of Starbucks, of McDonald's, of KFC, and you find that the business is dwindling. So much so that now they want to give free burger, they want to give free chicken, and so on and so forth, trying to attract the people. We should see to it that this should be sustained. We boycott the products of Israel and boycott the products of those countries that are supporting the unjust cause of Israel. Point number seven, that every Muslim should donate whatever possible in his capacity for the Palestinian cause. And while giving donation, the amount is not important, the percentage is important. And I always say that if a person who earned the thousand dollar a month and he donates hundred dollar for the Palestinian cause, he is donating 10% of his monthly income. On the other hand, if a billionaire who earns a billion dollar a month, from that he donates a million dollar for the Palestinian cause, one million dollar of a billion dollar is 0.01%, whereas hundred dollar of a thousand dollar is ten percent. So the person who earns a thousand dollar and donates hundred dollar for the Palestinian cause will get hundred times more sawab than a person who earns a billion dollar a month and donates a million dollar. Because hundred dollar is ten percent of his income and one million dollar of a person who earns a billion dollar a month is 0.1% of his income. So, the person who donates $100 after earning $1,000 will get 100 times more sawab than a person who donates a million dollar after he earns a billion dollar. So, while giving charity, you cannot say I am poor. Whatever you are, whatever you have, how much are you willing to sacrifice? What percentage of your income, whether it be a dollar or ten dollar or thousand dollar or a million dollar, Allah will look at the percentage, not on the amount. And Therefore, I say to all the people, whether rich or whether middle class or whether poor people, that make it a habit to give a percentage of what you earn in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see how your income, how your earnings, how your savings keep on increasing. These first seven points, every Muslim in the world can do, whether rich or poor, black or white, whether Arab or non-Arab, whichever part of the world is saying, he has no excuse of not paying for the Palestinian brothers and sisters, not praying for the victory for them, not spreading it one to one on the group, on the social media, not telling to the 10 important people that he knows personally, seeing to that he conveys it in the, in, in, in the place he works, in the college he or she studied, in the university, make it more common, see to it that he joins the protest in large numbers against the unjust regime of the Zionists, the Israelis, that he boycotts the product of the Israelis and those countries supporting Israel. And last is contribute whatever he can in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many people talk, oh, this rich country don't do anything, what are they doing? Allah will not question you why the rich head of the state of another country donating or not. Allah will question you, what have you done? I have given you a thousand dollar a month, couldn't you sacrifice from it? So for the first seven points, no Muslim, rich or poor, black or white, Arab or non-Arab, has excuse 
of not taking part in the first seven points. The balance eight points from the 15 point action plan can only be on those people who Allah has given the facility or have given the niyama that he can do. Point number eight, those Muslims who own satellite channels or who have friends who own satellite channels or who know people who own satellite channels or the international media, whether it be the international newspapers, whether it be international magazines, whether it be radio broadcast station, whether it be satellite channels, what they should do, that see to it, he, they should coax them or give them information so that they can show on the media. Everyone may not be owning channels or maybe having influence, but those who have, see to it that you influence them and make sure that they spread the truth on the media. Point number nine, there should be a battery of international lawyers. International lawyers who can file a case in the International Court of Law on war crimes against Israel. Whether you get results or not, you at least do it. If you are near the Allah will give you some. So there should be an organization of international lawyers who are well qualified and well known and see to it that you file a case in the international law. And we know that many years ago, Dr. Mahathir Mohammed, the former Prime Minister of Malaysia, he had made a, the Kuala Lumpur war crimes, he had made a Kuala Lumpur International Court where he put to trial Tony Blair and George Bush, who were responsible for the massacre done in Iraq, where hundreds of thousands of lives were killed and the sanction because of which many children were killed. And he called international judges, international lawyers, and after the case, though they did, Tony Blair and George Bush did not come to defend themselves, etc. But after the case was done, there was a resolution that if the former president of USA, George Bush, or the former prime minister of UK, Tony Blair, set foot in Malaysia, they would be arrested. MashaAllah. So see what results. So we should have a battery of lawyers seeing to it that whether we get results or not, we should see to it that we file a case against Israel for the war crimes and for the atrocities they did. This is point number nine. Point number 10, that we should make a waqf exclusively for the people of Palestine, exclusively for Masjid Aqsa. Make a waqf, maybe with investment, whatever capacity you have, see to it that you join along with your friends and make a waqf for the cause of Palestine, whether it may support to have international lawyers or whether it may it may give support as a, as a aid, with education aid, with the medical aid, or various options are there. There should be waqf, point number 10. Point number 11, that in those countries, where those countries which have an Israeli embassy, see to it that officially, the government where the embassies are there, they should give an official letter, official letter to the ambassadors of Israel in the country saying that we are against this genocide that's happening in Palestine and this genocide should stop immediately. Point number 12 is that there should be trade boycott between Israel and the country where you live. And you'll be shocked, not only Muslim countries, many non-Muslim countries, they said that they send the ambassadors back and point number 12 is that if they trade back out, there will be an economic impact on Israel. Stop buying weapons from them, stop buying any Israeli goods. We can always find a substitute. Point number 13, that we should severe the diplomatic relationship. Severe in the diplomatic relationship that we will no longer have the embassy of Israel in our country and we will not have our embassy in Israel, severe the diplomatic relationship. If you severe, it's a very hard one. 
Unfortunately, these people are very well equipped with the best of equipment, best of arms and ammunition, and they're killing innocent human beings. So, number 13 is that severe diplomatic relationship. Number 14. Number 14 is that how the Western countries have a NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. That means there are about 31 countries which are members, America and most of the European countries. They have 31 countries which are members and they say that if any country attacks any one of these 31 countries, it is as though you have attacked all 31 countries together. It's called as NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So the Muslims, we should have MECTO, Muslim Countries Treaty Organization. You know, there are 57 countries in the world, more than 25% in which Muslims are in majority. So all these 57 Muslim countries they get together and if they have this MECTO, Muslim country treaty organization, and have the same rules as NATO, why should people object when you can have the Western countries together and have a NATO? Why can't we have MECTO? And pass a resolution that if anyone attacks any one of these 57 countries, it is as though you have attacked all, all the 57 Muslim countries. And lastly, the 15th point is that we should re-establish the Khilafah. We know that Khilafah was abolished about 100 years back, in 1923, when Atatürk was there, and the treaty was signed for 100 years, now 100 years over. So we should re-establish the Khilafah, so the Muslims are united under one manner. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 103, Wa tasimu bihablillah jamia wa ratafruku. Hold strong to the rope of Allah and be not divided. The rope of Allah is the glorious Quran and the Sahih Hadith. And under this banner the Muslims came. I'm not saying that all the countries join together. At least let there be an umbrella. Let there be umbrella, each one can have can be leader of the country, but let there be a joint common umbrella so the Muslims are united. And if we are united, inshallah, we will not be disturbed like what's happening now. And we know the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, that Muslims will be looked down upon and one of the person asked the Prophet that, is it so because the Muslim will be less in number? The Prophet said, no, Muslim will be large numbers, but we'll be like froth. Froth, which has no particular uh, uh, purpose, only only numbers. So, he said, why? Because the Muslims would love this dunya and would be afraid of death. The Muslims will be a, love the dunya and be afraid of death. This is the reason we'll be in this situation. So, inshallah, inshallah, when the Muslims will stop loving the dunya and stop fearing death, inshallah, you will find the Muslim will be victorious. So, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to solve this problem, as I mentioned earlier, is very easy. Kun fa kun. So, the first question is that why is Allah allowing Israelis to kill thousands of Palestinians? I told you it's a test for the hereafter. What should the Muslims do? I've given the 15-point program. And the last question that, that why doesn't Allah give victory to the Palestinians? For Allah to give victory is very easy. Kun fa kun. Allah is testing us. Allah is seeing whether we Muslims pass the test or not and I give him the 15 point action plan. For Allah to solve the problem is very easy. Allah says in the Quran in no less than three different places. In Surah Tawbah chapter number 9 verse number 33. In, in Surah Fatah chapter 48 verse 28. And Surah Saf chapter number 61 verse number 9. هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِلُدَى وَالدِّينُ الْحَقِّ لِيُذِيرَ وَالدِّينَ كُلِّ وَلَوْ قَالِ الْمُشْرِكُونَ Allah sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth, so that it will prevail over all the other religions, over all the other isms, whether it be Christianism, Judaism, Hinduism, Socialism, Atheism, Islam is distant to supersede all. Kulle, master them all. And Allah ends out of three places and two places. How you the mushrik don't like it? And one place Allah says that, and enough is Allah as a witness. Wakafa billahi shayda. So for Allah to solve this problem is very easy. But Allah is testing us with fear and hunger, with loss of life. Allah is testing us. See who's going to pass this test. Allah has given opportunity. What are we doing for the cause of Palestine? 
What are we doing? Allah has given us such luxurious life. And when we see the thing that's happening, that imagine there the people are dying, the children are being murdered, and we are living away so much in comfort, in the luxury of a house, in air condition, with all the facility. What are we doing for the cause? Allah is testing us. And for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah does not require you and me the rubbish that we are. Allah has promised in this Quran that this deen will prevail over all the other religions. And the hadith is very clear cut that before the day of judgment, before the world ends, Muslims will rule the world for seven years. It will be the best era. We will rule the world for seven years. And later on, there will be a sweet wind which will put to death all the believers. And then the Qiyamah will start. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him to give victory to the Palestinians is easy. So we Muslims should realize that we should have faith in Allah. And we find unfortunately the situation of the Muslim country is very, very bad. Most of the Muslim countries, there are few which are speaking. Very few countries, maybe Qatar, uh, maybe Malaysia, few countries are only speaking actually against the atrocities of Israel in support of Palestine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing. What are we doing? It's a test. So, for Allah to solve the problem is very easy. Do we have faith in Allah? That with Allah's help, surely we'll be victorious. So, inshallah, inshallah, victory will surely be there. Today or tomorrow, maybe after a week, after a month, after a year, surely we are going to be victorious. And for seven years, the Muslims will rule the world with peace and prosperity.